Hello, everybody. We have about a minute before we get started. Just wait for some people to hop on. Hello to the person that just joins. We'll start in about a minute. Wait for some other people to hop on. You'll need a set of dumbbells, preferably like three to eight pounds, maybe three to five on the lighter side. And if you don't have any, you can always use some cans of food, a water bottle, and you can also use body weight too, which is pretty cool for this practice. So, and if you can set them alongside your mat so that they're easy to pick up, just like that. And I won't be playing music today, so if you want to put on some of your own tune, it'll make it a little more upbeat and fun, and then turn them off at the end when we get into the stretching and shavasana. So we'll go ahead and get started at 6.15, and I'm sure people will join on. But my name is Jordan, for those of you that don't know me, and I'm sorry I missed, I was not here last week. I was not feeling the best and I needed a week off, but I'm back and I'm good. So if you just hopped on and need a set of dumbbells, preferably lighter, or cans of food or anything that you can grab a hold of at, to use as weights for today's practice, and set them alongside your mat like so. And yeah, we'll go ahead and get started in a child's pose today. So sitting those hips back on the heels, bring the big toes to touch. And then you can keep your knees close together to stretch out the low back or to create a deeper hip stretch take the knees nice and wide and then start to walk your hands out find a place that feels comfortable to rest your forehead i'm gonna sit up so i can talk maybe start to rock the forehead side to side starting to listen to your breath and deepen the breath And today we'll focus on self-understanding. So two weeks ago, um, we did self-exploration. And I forget the other, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but today we're gonna be doing, after self-exploration comes self-understanding in this pyramid. So setting an intention for today's practice. So using your mind, to set this intention, but just for right now, set it. So whatever you're wanting to get out of this practice. And then when you've set your intention, moving it down to the heart. So this is where the self-understanding comes in, the understanding behind your intention. So why you chose it, what drives you for this, what, how we use it during practice, how will you use this off your mat in the real life. And just sitting with this intention in your heart space. So getting it out of your mind and bringing it down to your heart and making it feel so alive and so real that you can flow with it throughout your practice today. And starting to deepen the breath. Next inhale, filling the belly, the sides of the lungs, top of the chest. Open mouth, exhale, let it go. Inhale, fill up, big breath in. Exhale through the mouth, let it go. And exhale as you round the spine, pressing the earth away. Inhale, send the belly forward, gaze goes up. And exhale, tuck the chin, round the spine. Now moving on your own inhales and exhales. And while you're moving through these cat cows, bring a little restriction into that breath. So creating an oce oceanic sound, a constriction in the throat. Helps us bring us into that flow state. Where we're so tuned into our practice where nothing else matters. Just focus on your body, your mind, your breath. 
on your spirit. On your next inhale, come back to a neutral spine. And tuck the toes under, walk the hands back to meet the knees. So we'll be in a toe squat. You can have the knees rested on the mat, or you can bring them up for more of a balance challenge. But wherever you are, especially on your toes, sitting up nice and tall, bring the hands from this position, hug in the low belly, but then pressing the chest forward, squeezing those shoulder blades back, and maybe closing the eyes, challenging the balance just a bit more. Take one more breath in, lengthening from hips out through the crown of the head. And then plant the palms, drop the heels down, and lift those hips up for a forward fold at the back of your mat. And you can do whatever you want in this forward fold. Maybe grab opposite elbows with opposite hands for ragdoll. Or if your hamstrings are already feeling pretty open today, wrapping the hands around the, the backs of the shins. Maybe you just have your fingertips on the mats or against the shins. On your next inhale, come to a halfway lift. Palms press back up against the shins. As you pull the low belly in and press out through the crown of the head. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, stand it up, high mountain, reach the arms up. And exhale, bow, forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, fold it out. Inhale, stand it up, high mountain, reach up, take the gaze high. And exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, palms plant, walk it out to your high plank. And whether that be high on those back toes or coming down to the knees. Pressing firmly through both palms, taking the gaze just in between the two fingers, the thumbs. Shift forward on those toes, breathe in. And slowly lower all the way down to your mat, on your breath out, untucking the toes, arms come off to the sides, so high on those fingers for King Cobra. On your next inhale, lifting the chin and chest, squeezing and drawing the shoulders down. Exhale as you lower back down. Inhale, send the heart forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale once more. Chest rises. Maybe the gaze does too. Exhale, release the breath out. Palms underneath the shoulders, press up through tabletop or high plank. And exhale to downward facing dog. So maybe you choose to find stillness right away, bring awareness to a spot that feels tight, and then pursuing to bring movement to your body, or just bringing movement right off the bat. If you know your hamstrings are a little tight, pedaling the feet back and forth. And taking the next inhale to draw off the crown of the head lower and reach the tailbone up towards the sky. And exhale as you lower the heels back towards the mat. On your next inhale, gaze shifts forward. Exhale, step or float, feet to the top. Inhale to a flat back, inhale forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, palms plant, step it back, high plank, and lower halfway or all the way on your exhale. Inhale as you untuck the toes and lift the chest up, squeezing the inner thighs together, up dog or cobra. And exhale, lifting the hips up for downward facing dog. One here. And one deep breath out. And if you look forward, Exhale, step or float, feet to the top. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, bow. Inhale, stand it up, reach up, expand. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, back. Exhale, palms plant, step it back to high plank and hold. We'll drop the right forearm down to the mat. So we'll be in this really position for our plank. So left palm is planted, elbow is bent. But this right palm and right forearm are down on the mat. And you can stay here or drop to your knees because we'll be coming into some push-ups. Just a few like this. So on your exhale, start to drop the nose down towards the right thumb. And inhale as you press back up. Exhale, lower it down. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lower. We'll take five. 
four, three, two, one. Press it up. Start to drop the heels down towards the mat, keeping this right forearm planted. And inhale, raise the left arm up for a side forearm plank. So you can keep the feet stacked for more of a challenge, or you can stagger them. So both heels are planted on the mat. So wherever you are, lifting the hips up, extending high through those left fingers. Breathe in. And breathe out. Left palm finds the mat. Come back high. Toes. Press up into the right palm. And exhale into downward facing dog. Just doing these sun A's a little bit slower, taking our time doing those push-ups. Next, inhale, gaze shifts forward. Exhale, step or float, feet to the top. Inhale, flat back, breathe in. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, stand it up, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Big inhale, halfway lift. Palms plant, step it back, high plank. You know where we're going. Left forearm finds the mat, still pressing into that right palm. Right elbow is bent at a 90 degree angle. Staying high on the toes or dropping the knees to the mat. On your exhale, lowering the nose down towards the left thumb. Inhale, press it up. Exhale, lowers you down. For five, four, three, two, one, press it up, dial the heels down, left forearm is planted, open up, right arm towards the sky, chest rotates up, hips lift, creating a little rainbow shape with your body, breathe in, send the hips a little bit higher, and exhale, right palm to the mat, high in those back toes, press up to the left hand, and exhale into your downward facing dog. One breath in, filling the belly all the way to the top of the chest, around your heart space. Exhale, let it go. Inhale once more, filling the chest all the way up. Exhale, release. Inhale, that rises up. Three, you can stay here, squaring the hips down, so turning the right inner thigh up towards the ceiling, pressing back through that heel. Or if your hips are feeling open, stacking them on top of each other. Next to inhale, kick the heel just a bit higher. And exhale, right elbow to right knee to right elbow. Inhale, extend it long. Exhale, bring knee to elbow. Inhale, send a high three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, one more, reach it high. Exhale, right foot to the top of the mat. And so now our weights, and we'll actually be coming back to this position a lot, grabbing our weights and standing up. So feeling a firm foundation from right off the bat. All right, the right, all four corners of the right foot are planted into the earth, high on those back toes with the heel rolled on top. Using the low belly, we'll rise up to a so we'll be going back and forth between the weights and picking them up. So now that we're up in high crescent, extending high through the crown of the head. And then on your inhale, start to drop the left knee to a hover or it can come to the mat, dropping the weights down. And exhale, stand it back up to crescent. Inhale, lower the back knee, grab the weights. Exhale, stand it up. So now moving back and forth with this position, but keeping the right knee bent the entire time. So we really want to tire out this right leg. Also, this back leg should be working too, especially if you're keeping the left knee to a hover. And each time you stand up tall, drop those shoulders down, squeeze them back. Try not to keep them tense. We'll take eight, seven, Six, and one, pick up those weights, come up to your high crescent lunge. And then set this left foot in just a bit. So hips are squared towards the front of the mat into pyramid pose. Arms will be down in front of us, palms facing back towards us. 
We'll take a deep breath in, filling up. And exhale as we raise our heels up, adding a front raise, so bringing the hands up to shoulder height. And then inhale, lowering back down, lowering the heels too. Exhale, stand it up, raise the heels, raise the arms. Inhale, lower. Exhale, raise it up. And maybe you choose to find a focus point just straight ahead of you. Focus point will help you be focused in your own practice, in your own body, help you tune into your breath that much more. We'll take six, five, four, three, two, and one. Heels find the mat. We'll start to bring the weight into the right foot, kicking this left heel up and back into your warrior three. So not worrying about how high this left foot is, but more so your hips square down towards the mat. So maybe taking your left, guiding it to the left hip and moving it down slightly. Palms will be facing in towards each other, just relaxing the shoulders. So elbows underneath the shoulders, rip your elbows. And when you've found a steady warrior three, on your exhale, you'll roll the elbows back to hug in towards the side of the ribs. Inhale, lower it down. Exhale, row it back. So engaging that left leg so much. So pressing back through that left heel, feeling the left hamstring fire up. Not relying on this right leg to hold us up, but our entire body. For eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Drop the left foot behind into that pyramid stance. And now we will we'll be going through motions, putting them together. So starting out with the heel raise and the front raise. So raising the heels and the palms on the exhale. Lower it down, transfer the weight into the right foot. Warrior three, adding that row. Inhale, step it back, left foot finds the mat. Exhale as you raise everything up. Into warrior three, flatten out the back. Exhale, add the row. So now moving at your own pace. And maybe your balance is on fire today. Maybe you can go a little bit faster than the pace I'm going at. But also knowing going at a slow pace is also very, very good. Activates more muscles than we think while falling. We're going all through all those little challenges of the balance. Activating more muscles. Moving more. We'll take about five more, both sets. Last four. Two. And one more. Both movements. And when you step it back into your pyramid, start to fold over the right leg, dropping the weights alongside your mat. Feeling this nice stretch in the back of the right leg. Pulling the right hip forward, pressing the left hip back to square off those hips. Big breath in, and a big breath out, releasing the torso down towards the back of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Plant the palms at the front of your mat and step it back to a high plank. And now lower the right forearm to the mat, followed by the left forearm. So not some rocks, sorry, <laughs> wobbly, lopsided. Forearm plank, both forearms will now be on the mat. In our inhale, we'll shift us forward on those toes. And exhale, pressing the heels back towards the mat. Inhale, shift it forward. Exhale, drop back. 
So a little forearm chain. So I was going back and forth. And focus on the movement of your core. That's really, it's not what's moving you. It's your heels and your toes, but just noticing the movement come from your core makes a huge difference in how much you are activating and using your belly. So just visualizing the core moving back and forth, doing all the work for six, five, four, three, two, one, drop everything to the mat, on top of the toes, elbows are underneath the shoulders. So now we're in Sphinx pose, noticing the hips press into the mat, as well as the elbows and the forearms. So now that you've got this traction, higher front side of your belly, just lengthening and pulling in opposite directions, stretching the core out. Now maybe walking the hands forward into seal. On your next exhale, lower everything to the mat. Press up through tabletop or high plank. And if you're pressing up into high plank, maybe take it a little slower to engage everything. So first tucking the toes, plank flat back. And exhale, downward facing dog. Taking a deep inhale, filling the space around your heart. The place where you're understanding your intention, the why behind your practice today. And exhale, releasing it out through the mouth. Inhale, breath in through the nose. And exhale, breath out through the nose. Inhale, left leg rises, three-legged dog. Left heel can be pressed up very firmly, squaring the hips or stacking the hips on top of each other. Taking the next inhale to stay in this three-legged dog. And exhale, bring left knee to left elbow. Inhale, extend the left leg high. Exhale, left knee to left elbow. Inhale, shoot it long. Exhale, knee to elbow. Once more, breathe in. Exhale, left foot to the top of the mat. Grabbing those weights, putting them right underneath of your shoulders. Engaging the belly. And on your breath in, rising up. So on your inhale, dropping the right knee to a hover or all the way to the mat, dropping the weights down by your sides. And exhale, press it up. Each time you press up, lengthen up, open up the chest. Inhale, right knee finds the mat or to a hover, grab the weights. Exhale, press it up. Inhale, lower. Exhale, rise up. So again, keeping this bend into the left knee the entire motion. We'll stay for six, five, four, three, two, and last one. Make sure you pick up your weights, stand it up into high crescent, and then straighten into the left leg. Step the right foot up. Pyramid stance, both sets of toes pointed forward, squaring those hips to the front. Arms rest down in front, palms facing towards us. Big breath in. And exhale, raising the heels, adding the front raise. Inhale, lower it down. Exhale, raise it up. And try not to use momentum to swing those arms up, but instead, Using the arms and using the low belly. We'll stay for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lower the heels back down. Transfer the weight into the left foot. Right foot extends behind. Dialing that left inner th right inner thigh up towards the sky as the right hip flexor draws down towards the mat. 
Arms are hitting down by your sides. Breathe in. Exhale, roll the arms back. Inhale, lower them down. Exhale, row it back. Now trying to see if you can get your torso close to parallel to the mat. So dropping the chest just a bit for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Right foot finds the mat. Breathe in. Now adding the movements together, exhale, raise the heels, raise the arms, lower them back down, transfer into warrior three, adding the row. Inhale, step the right foot back, exhale, raise it up. And for this, since we're not holding warrior three for too long, try to get that torso. Each time you come into warrior three, Closer to the ground while trying to keep the hips squared. Five more. Last four. Three. And two. And last one, make sure you add that warrior three. Step the right toes back and slowly start to drop the torso down to the mat, dropping the weights along your side. A nice forward fold to get into that left leg. And if you want to bring a little more stretch into the back of the left leg, coming high onto those right toes, putting more weight into the left foot. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, palms plant at the top of your mat. Step it back, high plank. Drop the left forearm to the mat, followed by coming back into those forearm chainsaws. So inhale, shift forward on those toes, even more forward than you did last time. Exhale, send the heels far, far back. Inhale, shift it forward. Exhale, draw the heels back. So not only engaging the core, but also feeling a nice stretch in the calves. Each time we press those heels back. We'll stay for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lower everything down to the mat. You can stay in Sphinx or press it back into child's pose. Or even grab a drink of water. That's what I'm going to do. Or if you want a more active rest, not that those are all. Not active, but downward dog also works. I feel like every time I've taught here, it's been sunny out at this time, which is not a bad thing at all. It's awesome, but the sun just like blares through my window and makes it like 10 times hotter in here. You can see how red I am in the camera. But now it's like hot yoga, so it works out perfectly. So coming back to your mat, pressing the palms firmly down, tugging the toes under, lifting the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg rises, three-legged dog. And exhale, right foot to the top of the mat. And on your next inhale, rise up to crescent, breathe in. And breathe out, sink those hips lower. We're just coming into a little flow to lead us up to a side plank in between the two sequences. So on your next exhale, open it up to warrior two. Left foot is parallel to the back of the mat, driving that right shin forward and expanding through the chest. So maybe drawing the arms back just a bit to engage the upper back muscles. And exhale into side angle, either right elbow to right knee or right palm to the mat. Big breath in as you reach the left fingers up. Maybe turn the pinky in to engage that bicep. And then if you want to step into side plank from here, go ahead. You can step the right foot back. Or you can drop the left foot down, left hand down, onto the left, spin onto the left toes. Step it back to high plank. And then transfer the weight into your right palm. 
dial the heels down and open up, left arm high. And so we're not just gonna stay here because this is fit flow. So we have the option of always coming down to this right knee. We'll extend the left leg up. It does not have to be high. It can be a couple centimeters. Be higher if you'd like. Reach the left arm forward and exhale, hugging left elbow, left knee. Inhale, extend. Exhale, hug it in. And again, if this seems really challenging and you only want to do a couple, I challenge you to try a couple, but then you can drop it to your right knee if needed. If your right wrist isn't always happy or if you have problems with your wrist, feel free to drop down to your knee. We'll take six, five, four, three, two, one. Extend it long, breathing. Left palm to the mat, high on those toes. And now taking a float or pressing back to down dog. So lower halfway all the way on your exhale. Inhale, send the heart forward. And exhale, downward facing dog. One breath in the stillness, high on the right toes. Inhale, rise it up to crescent. Sink the hips low, reach the arms back, maybe so you can't see them in your engaging the entire back, not just these legs. On your next exhale, open it up, warrior two. Left shin presses forward as your right arm extends back. Next exhale into side angle, left elbow to left knee or left palm to the mat. Right arm extends up above. And then however you wanna to get to side plank, go ahead, left palm is just in the center of the mat. You can either stack the feet, stagger them, or drop the left knee to the mat. We'll take the right leg either to a hover or up a little bit higher. Right arm extends overhead, bicep just by the ear. Exhale, hug it in, right knee to right elbow. Inhale, expand. Exhale, hug it in. Noticing all five fingers pressing into the mat. If you're losing a little bit of balance, we'll stay for six, five, four, three, two, one. Stay in this extended plank. Breathe in, feel so much side body stretch, right side. Exhale, lower the right foot down, right palm finds the mat. And lowering halfway or all the way on the exhale. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, a downward facing dog. And if you're starting to get super tired, lose that focus of your intention, bring your awareness back to that intention that you set. But again, bring more so back to the understanding of why you set that intention. Just to make us that much more motivated to finish out this practice. Inhale, send the gaze forward. Exhale, step or float feet to the top. Inhale, flat back, lengthen out. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, stand it up, high mountain. This should feel so good, full body stretch. Exhale, bring hands to heart. Grabbing both of your weights, coming to the top of your mat, big toes to touch. Sit in hips back and down into chair pose. Now you can have the hands wherever you would like, down by your sides, heart center, or up above head for a little bit of a challenge. If they're up above head, try not to start to arch your back, engaging the belly, pulling it back towards your navel. And all we're gonna do here is pulse up and down. So sinking the hips, you can go a couple centimeters, you could go a foot up and down. You can come into a really low squat and then straight legs, whatever you're feeling right now. Maybe come back and forth, because that's what I'm doing, I guess. <laughs> now focus in on the inner thighs, pulling into each, other, into each other, squeezing in. And now noticing both sides of the hip 
hips firmly coming into the midline. One point of focus in the center of your body. Hug everything in for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stand it up, straight legs. A balance in this right foot. And if you don't feel like keeping your hands overhead, you can always bring them down to shoulder height, down by your side, because if that might be a little hard, we're gonna lift this left leg. So either up, higher, shoulders, or overhead for a challenge. Left knee into in towards your chest. Actually, no. Left foot to the mat. We're gonna go to the side, not out front. So start to extend the left leg out towards the side, but not turning the hips to unsquare them. So not turning the left toes towards the ceiling, but keeping a really firm activation in this left outer hip, pointing the toes forward. And then inhale brings you back to center. Exhale, left leg extends out. Inhale, lower it down. Exhale out. So keeping the hips nice and forward. And it's nice if you have a mirror recording. I can see what my hips are doing, so it makes it a lot easier. And each time the left leg kicks out to the side, still staying up, not falling over towards the right. We'll stay for six, five, four, three, two, one. Left foot finds the mat. Drop the weights just for a second. And now we're going to add a couple movements together, that one and stepping back into a reverse lunge. So you have the option of arms again, shoulder height up above head. Right foot is planted at the top of the mat, stepping the left toes back. And then exhale as you bring the right, straight into the right leg to face forward. And then adding that left side, left leg kick out to the side. Inhale, brings you back to center. Step it back into crescent. Exhale, right foot has the weight. Left leg out to the side. Inhale, step it back. Exhale, out to the side. Whenever you step it back into your crescent lunge, noticing the right knee on top of that right ankle, not behind it, not in front of it. You want to get as much out of this multi-movement pose we're doing. We'll stay for five, four, three, two, and one. Step the left foot down, drop the weights. Along in the spine out. And exhale as you flare the elbows out. Pulling the chest back towards the thighs. Inhale, halfway lift. Let go of the toes. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up to standing. Arms reach and extend out. And exhale, hands meet at heart center. Grabbing those weights again, coming back into your chair pose. Big toes to touch. Option to keep the heels together or bring a little space in between them. Sitting the hips back. And not only the hips sitting back, but the shins pressing back, just like in our warrior twos or warrior ones. And then start to pulse up and down. I'm taking this next breath to notice your upper back. Is it rounding or is it expansive? We want it to be expansive. So if your weights are at heart center, it could be a little more challenging, more collapse. We tend to collapse in the lungs, but instead opening up, creating broadness throughout the collarbones. And continuing, the, continuing this pulsing for six, five, 
four, three, two, one. Left foot, bringing the right heel to a hover. And exhale, right leg out to the side, keeping the hips squared. Inhale, lower it down. Exhale to that side leg raise. And not just swinging the leg up there, but making it so compact into the hip. So much engagement in that whole outer right leg. For six, five, four, three, two, one. Right leg finds that. Drop the weights down by your sides. Give the arms a little shrug. And I'll come into that. The two movements put together. So starting with the arms up or at shoulder height, stepping the right toes back, crescent lunge. Breathe in. Exhale, right foot to the top, adding the side leg raise. Inhale, step it back to crescent. Right knee can drop down or come to a hover. Exhale, step it up. Inhale, crescent. Exhale, up to the top. We'll stay for six. Five, four, three, two, last one. Drop the right foot down, drop the weights alongside your side. And then bring feet hips with distance. Bring the tops of the feet to lift, sorry, the bottoms of the feet to lift up. And then slide the tops of your hands underneath of your feet. And try to get the big toes up towards the top of the wrist. Inhale, as you send the heart forward, feel the catch in the backs of the legs. Nice stretch. And exhale, as you start to bend into the elbows, dropping the head down. And rocking side to side. Releasing that grip and slowly rise up to standing. And exhale, bring hands to heart center. Now grabbing the weights. One more little thing before we take it all the way down. We're actually gonna like start up high and then make our way down. So starting in chair pose, bringing arms down by our sides and taking some tricep kickbacks but you have the option of staying on your heels, nice and ground into the earth, which is nice. Or for one last little challenge, coming high up onto the balls of the feet, elbows are hugging in, hinging slight waist, and then exhale, sending the arms behind you. Inhale, arms back to the center. Exhale, kick it back. So from the elbow up, nothing is moving. High on those toes, sit, hips sink a little bit lower. This is so challenging on carpet. <laughs> I feel like I always say that, but then there's new moves that come and it's just like even more challenging than the previous move. We'll stay for six, five, four, three, two, one, stay high in those toes and come up onto the toes if you're not already there. And slowly, slowly start to lower the hips down to the heels into that toe squat, toe squat we were in, the, in at the beginning of practice. But this time, we're going to be adding bicep curls into it. So you have the option of keeping the knees lifted or dropping them to the mat. Elbows are hugged in, just like the tricep extensions. Curl. There is so much going on in this pose. I'm sure you can name like 10 things. Starting with the feet, the stretching out the bottoms of our feet, 
but also the engagement in the calves, the lower belly, and the thing that we're moving, so our biceps. So much going on, but just stay with it. Stay with that focus. Stay with the why behind your intention. For six, five, four, three, two, one, drop the weights down, come into a seat on your mat. It should feel so good on those feet. Toes flexing, extending the toes, creating a little movement in the feet. Now bring the soles of the feet to touch. Put it into a butterfly so you can stay up proud and tall. Or you can start to walk the hands out, rest in anything you want on the mat. And you'll get different sensations with how close your heels are to the body. So if you want more of an inner thigh stretch, keeping them closer. If you want a little more outer in the glutes, keeping them far away. Slowly start to rise up. If you were folded over, now crossing right knee over left knee, and it doesn't have to be directly on top. But whenever you get situated with your knees crossed, we'll start to drop the right hand down to the side and inhale, extend the left arm high. So I did this stretch with someone in a class this week. They did this and I've never, I, I love this pose, just how it is. They usually fold forward, but they had us go to the side and drop our forearm down. Yeah, I just got such a different stretch in the outer. So I wanted to share it. Also like a side body stretch too. You don't have to come down to the forearm. You can stay up on the right hand. But it's just a nice, different variation of the cross legs. Slowly start to rise back up. Now we'll inhale the arms up. Exhale, take a twist, left hand to the outer right thigh, right hand behind you. Inhale, sit up tall, lengthen up. And exhale, add a little deeper twist. And you'll come back through center, arms up. And exhale, palms plant, switch out the legs. Right knee on bottom, left knee on top. And now planting the left palm down, left palm or left forearm if you want to. Just really try to keep the right hip grounded because that's where we can find the stretch the most. So if your right hip pops up when the left forearm comes to the ground, stay on the left hand. But we'll inhale the right arm up, reach into the fingertips. Instead of turning the torso down, actually that is also a different stretch. You can play with turning the torso up or turn it down towards the mat. You'll feel how the weight transfers in the hip, getting a little different stretch. I think I like. And rising up, inhale, arms up. Exhale, twist it over to the left. And sitting up tall and not relying on this left hand to twist you back and straighten out, out the spine, but instead using the core. So putting less weight into this left hand. Inhale, come forward, reach up and exhale, let the arms go. Uncross the legs. And now we'll come down onto our backs, slowly hugging the knees in. Taking some rock side to side, massaging out the low back. And now we'll come into an inversion. If you want to take legs up the wall, go ahead. We'll eventually turn it into shoulder stand. Or if you want to add a headstand, a handstand, forearm stand, whatever is in your practice, go ahead. So if you're in legs up the wall, pressing those heels up towards the ceiling, engaging 
from the heels all the way down to our hips. And then if you wanna take shoulder stand, lifting those hips up, placing the hands on the low back. But bring awareness to your neck. And if it feels all crunched up, then take the hips forward just a bit more. Letting the neck relax. And it's nice actually talking and teaching because I can tell if my neck is not relaxed or not because I wouldn't be able to talk. So maybe like trying to say a couple words. <laughs> Making sure your neck is fully relaxed, fully open. And if you want to take plow pose, dropping the feet behind the head, pressing back through the heels. Maybe your arms are still placed on your low back or they come down to the mat. Or maybe adding a little bind with the hands down the mat. Slowly rising up through shoulder stand and lowering the heels to the hips, the knees into the chest, and then the hips to the mat. And now we'll take bridge pose. So soles of the feet are planted, arms are down by your sides. Inhale as you press up, lifting the hips towards the sky. Hands clasp underneath of the low back. Maybe rock, walk the shoulders underneath. Getting a little stretch in the shoulders and the upper back because we use those a lot today with arms overhead. Inhale, activate the glutes just a bit more. Breathe in. Exhale, lower everything to the mat. We'll take one more bridge or if wheel is in your practice. Bring the hands behind next to the ears, fingers facing towards you. And whenever you are ready, your next inhale, deep breath in, pressing the hips up. We're taking three deep breaths here. One more breath in. And slowly tuck the chin in, lowering the hips to the mat. And now we'll come into happy baby. So bring the knees in towards the chest, grabbing a hold of really anywhere on the foot, inside or outside, or even the shins, if that's more accessible for you. And then pressing the knees in towards the mat. I think my favorite cue for this pose to really get it super engaged and super effective it's like it's fitting a bed sheet over a mattress. So just noticing your entire back like a mattress, and then you're pulling the sheet over all four corners. So those four corners being the two hips, the two everything is engaged, squeezing down towards the mat. And by having the lower back grounded to the earth, you're still really effectively using the lower belly. Now, if you want to come into a partial or full straddle, sending the legs out straight, maybe rocking back side to side. Now, hugging the knees in towards your chest. And bring the chin up towards the knees, wrapping yourself into a tiny ball. One last squeeze, one last. And all the muscles in the body, breathe in. Exhale, release everything to the mat. Legs go nice and long, arms are down by your sides. Maybe taking up a little more space than you usually do. So bringing the arms and legs off of the mat. And I tend to do that, I feel more open and free and able to bring my breath into more areas of my body. And as you start to lie here, just starting to notice your breath. 
I know I am theming on self-understanding, but I wanted to share something that is really important with the breath, and I watched on it a few nights ago. I was, I'm really into monk life for some reason, and I was watching a video on monks and their daily lives, and there was this little boy who's five years old, and the person that was interviewing him asked him what he learned in his first day in monk school, and he said, we learned how to breathe, and I just, it was so touching. That wasn't all of it, but, and then he said, that's the only thing that we have for our entire lives, from life to death. That's what we're given. Like friends, family, hobbies, careers, those all come and go. But the only thing that stays with us is our breath. For when we come in to the world with an inhale and leave the world with an exhale. And I thought that was just so, so powerful. So just knowing the impact that your breath has and how it's with you your entire life. So just letting that sink in, listening to the sound of your breath as you come into a few final moments of Shavasana. If you want to stay longer in the Shavasana, I recommend turning the live stream off, turning the volume down. But whenever you're ready, starting first to bring awareness back to that breath, if you lost it. And then bring awareness into the body, the hands and the feet. Take the arms overhead, full body stretch. And exhale, pull everything into the center, falling onto your favorite side, coming into a fetal position, and slowly rising up into a comfortable seat where your sit bones ground into the earth, the hands are at heart center, and slightly tucking the chin to lengthen the back of the neck, and then close down the eyes. Coming back to that intention that you set, the why behind your intention, and knowing that you can come back to the why behind anything in your life. So if you are setting intentions throughout your day to get work done, to achieve goals, just come back to the reason you set it and find the deeper meaning. It'll make it so much more, you'll have so much more motivation and positivity and motivation to just achieve that goal, achieve that intention. So sitting here with that understanding in your heart, feeling it through your thumbs, pressing up against the chest. One last breath in, fill up, reach the arms overhead. And exhale as hands pull through your heart center and we bow. As we seal our practice in Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody that is tuned in to tonight's practice. And if you weren't here when I said before, that I'm sorry I was not here last week. I was a little sick, but I am back. Sorry, the sun's like blinding me. You can't see me. Um, but I'm back and I'll be teaching again Thursday at six. Hi, Laura. So I'll be teaching again Thursday at 6, not 6.15. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great night and a great week. Also, this is through the Nurse and Movement Challenge. Ohio University is being a part of that, which is amazing. So make sure you log your hours in for today's class and tell your friends about this, everyone that goes to OU, all the other live stream classes, TNT, HIT, 
other yoga classes, this fit flow class. So thank you all so much. And for those that are a part of the nursing movement and don't know me or they're from a different college, that's amazing. Thank you for taking my class. My name is Jordan, if you didn't catch it at the beginning. But thank you and have an amazing night. And I'll see you Thursday.